Beloved, I welcome you once again to the Way of Salvation program. And I believe you are learning deep things from the Lord Jesus Christ. In the last episode, I was talking about the things people do because we don't know God. And what I dwelt on was about the glory of God. So what I meant was that because people don't know God, they don't give him the glory. I was building it up from the Lord's prayer that he taught us that for thine is the glory. So that's what I mean. If the glory is the Lord's, then you need to give it all to him. No one can come near God's glory. He says he doesn't share his glory with anyone. So if you pray the Lord's prayer, it means you are acknowledging the fact that he is the only one who has all the glory. And when he says he doesn't share his glory with anyone, he's perfectly right. The reason is that he owns everything. He created everything you see. So no individual can come near to share what he did with himself because he solely created everything we see. That is what I'm trying to talk about. So as we continue today, I want us to understand that giving God the glory is talking about his ability and potency. If you can talk about what God can do and the power that he has, then it means you are giving him the glory. That is what I want us to understand. If you do that, it means you are testifying of the potency and the ability of God. And this is what I'm saying that people don't do because they don't know it. If you know that a house is owned by someone, you will never say a tenant owns the place. If you know that it's owned by the original owner, you give him the glory. And that is what I'm saying. All people who refuse to give God the glory are challenging his ability and potency as the creator. Anyone who refuses to do that is challenging him. And who are you to challenge God? Because you are also a part of his creation. So there's no way you can challenge God with regards to his glory. Anybody who tries to come near the glory of God and challenges God is out of his mind. Because you who are challenging God is also a part of his creation. Hallelujah. So when I talk about testifying about his, his potency and ability, let me give you two examples. You can do that in two ways. The first way to give God the glory is to talk about what God can do to myself. That is self-testify or self-testimony. When I testify to myself, it means that I am encouraging myself about the ability and potency of God. And the other one is testifying to others about what God can do for them. Thus, you are giving God the glory by yourself and giving God the glory as you talk about him to other people. That is how it, it should be. So, uh, uh, get those ways deep inside yourself. Understand both ways. I am giving God the glory by myself and I give God the glory as I talk about him to others. 
That is what I want you to understand. Both ways. One is about me giving him glory by myself. And the second one is about giving him the glory as I talk about him to others. Okay. Those who speak like that know who God is so they give him the glory that is due to his name. So let me give you two examples about giving God the glory by yourself. Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 11. The story there is that Lazarus was the friend of Jesus. Had been dead for four days because the Lord was not around. Now let's hear what Martha, who was the sister of Lazarus, said when she saw that the Lord had come uh, to the house. Verse 21 says that, and now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Amen. According to what I read, Martha was giving God the glory by encouraging herself that if the Lord had been there, she knew perfectly well that her brother would not die. And she went on to say that even presently, whatever you are going to ask of God, I know God will grant it. Hallelujah. It means that Martha encouraged herself that in the midst of the sorrowful attitude, in the midst of the sorrowful atmosphere, I know that if Jesus comes in, the situation can change. That is giving God the glory by yourself. You see? So, she, she said that even though Lazarus had been dead for four days, Jesus had the power to bring him back to life. That was a very good self-encouragement that she gave to herself. And truly, as she spoke, she saw the glory of God. And Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, came to, to life. He came back to life. So, you see, as you learn from the self-glory you can give to God, in every circumstance you may find yourself in, try to encourage yourself by saying that if God comes into this situation, I know that everything can turn upside down. I know that things will not be the same again. If you pray the Lord's Prayer and you acknowledge what the Lord said, that for thine is kingdom power. I'm picking the last one. He said, for thine are these three things. Kingdom, I've dealt with that already. Power, I've dealt with that already. The glory. So, if I pick only the glory, this is what you'll be saying. For thine is the glory. So, if you say, for thine is the glory, it means that I acknowledge in my life that whatever situation that I am going through, that even as I preach to you right now, whatever situation that you may be going through right now, it may be sorrowful as the situation of Mary and Martha's house. It may be very dis distressing. You may be going through hard times, but if you can encourage yourself as Martha did by saying that, Lord, I give you the glory that when you come in, my situation will change. That is what God expects of you. That is understanding the meaning of the Lord's prayer. Hallelujah. Okay, that is the first example about giving God the glory by yourself. Let me give you the second example of giving God the glory by yourself. I said I'm giving you two examples with regards to giving God the glory by oneself. The second one has to do with Mark chapter 5. It says that now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. 
and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Hallelujah. That is another perfect example of giving God the glory by oneself. This woman here suffered for 12 years with an issue of blood. Blood was flowing out of her body for 12 years. And she was alone in the room. But she heard the presence of Jesus. So she began to give God the glory by herself. She began to say that I know that the glory is the Lord's. So if the Lord Jesus comes around my situation, I know that the situation will change. That was her self-encouragement. And truly, she struggled among the crowd and tight the clothes of Jesus and truly and spontaneously the flowing of blood ceased. You see? So I'm here to tell you that if you can practice giving God the glory by yourself always, every situation that you may find yourself in can turn around. So learn to do that. That is the understanding you need to have. So that is the first example about giving God the glory by oneself. The second example I said is that you can give God the glory by talking to others about him. By letting others know or see what he can do. By, by testifying about his potency. That is the second example. So let's go to the, the book of Kings. Second Kings chapter 5 and I'll be reading from verse 1 to 3. It says that now Naaman commander of the army of the king of Syria was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he will heal him of his leprosy. Amen. What we read is another perfect example of giving God the glory by testifying about his potency and ability to others. That is exactly what this scripture talks about. A young slave girl who was held captive and was serving in the house of a commander of Syria who was called Naaman. And the girl was touched by the condition of the commander. How can a great man like you, a commander, be a leper? She was deeply moved by that. So, this girl had been in Israel and she saw the glory of God there. She saw that the glory of God was on his servant, Elisha. So, this girl said, let me, let me testify of the glory of God to these people. Let me bring in his glory to them. So she said, if only my master were in Israel with the prophet called Elisha, I know that God is able to heal him of his leprosy. And truly, when the woman talked about the issue with her husband, Captain Naaman, and he agreed to go to Israel, when he went to Israel, truly, 
according to the young woman of Israel's testimony, Captain Naaman was healed of his leprosy. That is to tell you and inform you that if you give God the glory by telling other people about him, God comes in to show himself strong. You see? So this is my conclusion as I wrap up what I just told you today. By giving God the glory by yourself or giving God the glory as you tell others about him. Let me, let me give you my conclusion. This is my conclusion. Those who give God the glory see his glory in every circumstance of their lives. Those who give God the glory see his glory in every circumstance of their lives. That is to say that no matter what you go through, if you give God the glory, he will come in to glorify his holy name. Because that is the meaning of what you said in the last prayer. That if all glory is his, then if you give it to him, he will come into your situation and show himself strong. Another thing I want you to note is this. When you glorify God, he will not put you to shame. When you glorify God, he will not put you to shame. I will continue next time because of time. So I'm here to tell you that I'm serving a God whose glory can never be shared with anyone. So if you believe that in every situation that you are in right now, you keep encouraging yourself as I always encourage you with the words and the watch word of my ministry and the church that with God all things are possible. I will see you next time. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.